Okay, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Parvinder Jita, and welcome to this tech talk on nonlinear analysis. The main purpose of this tech talk to, is, is to introduce you to the new SACS Collapse 2 nonlinear elastoplastic analysis program. Collapse 2 is an enhancement of the SACS original Collapse program. A beta copy of this program is due out to be released with the SACS Connect Edition version 12.0, which is due out very soon. So let me get a move on. This slide here shows some of the new functionalities of the new program. Uh, CLAPS2 accounts for both large deflections via the inclusion of second order strains and large rotations, also termed as uh, the co-rotational approach. A full tangent stiffened iterative approach is used for the solution of the nonlinear equation. An arc length iterative approach is used to predict unloading behavior resulting from member buckling or overall failure of the structure or any joint failure. An automatic incrementation scheme is used to automatically reduce the load increment size in case where convergence becomes an issue. The effects of lateral torsional buckling are included via the inclusion of the torsional strain components in conjunction with the co-rotational approach. Plasticity is allowed to develop gradually throughout the cross-section of a member at any location along the member, and both Euler and Timoshenko beam the theories are supported. Similarly, both Kirchhoff, which is a thin plate theory, and the Mendelin thick plate theories are also supported. The new CLAPS program allows for the gradual development of a plastic hinge through the cross-section of a member by monitoring the stress strain history at integration points throughout the cross section of as shown here. Similarly, uh, the member length is automatically discretized into sub elements to allow for hinge formation anywhere along the member length. The one Mises Henke criteria is used to determine plasticity. Sorry, let me go back. Note other programs out there limit the formation of a hinge at the ends and the center of a member, which of course is not always the case, especially if the stiffness at either end of the member is different. Uh, besides, limiting the hinge formation at the ends and the center of the member is effectively predefining your failure mechanism. Okay, so what are the benefits of the new collapse uh, program. Well, the large deflection and the large rotation now allow you to predict extremely large deformations. The arc length iterations now allow you to predict unloading in the case, as I said before, of a, uh, you get a member failure, joint failure, or overall failure of the structure. The automatic sub-incrementation scheme is implemented in the new program uh, basically allows you to improve the runtime. It saves you having to rerun the analysis over over again by reducing or changing the step size, load step size. The distributed plasticity, in other words, allowing the hinge formation to occur anywhere along the length and gradually through through the cross section, in addition to the torsional buckling, now give you a very uh, improved uh, failure mechanism. Okay, so this uh, little video shows the ability of the new program to predict very large deformations. This is a cantilever composed of a, a tubular section with an end moment. This is again repeated with plate elements, again this is a cantilever with an end moment, however this is the elastic deformation. Similarly, this is now the plastic deformation of the same member. You can see we can predict uh, over and above nearly 360 degrees of uh, 
deformation. This slide here shows a pushover analysis and basically shows the, the way collapse uh, allows for the plastic hinge formation anywhere along the member. You can see here that the plasticity is actually spread across the members and not confined to the centers and the end of the member as predicted by other programs out there. This is a graphical uh, depiction of the load displacement for that pushover analysis that you just saw. And as you can see, we now also predict the unloading after the structure has failed. This is a real case application. In this case, we have a bridge uh, between two jackets and which, got, which was damaged uh, in a hurricane. And the new collapse now predicts the extremely large deformations that had occurred uh, very accurately and shows the member buckling as, as in reality. This here is a dropped object analysis. Here we have meshed the deck uh, in the vicinity of the dropped object. And the deck, in addition to the deck, the beams underneath the supporting beams have also been meshed. And you can see the new collapse can now predict very, very large deformations, uh, as you see for the beam underneath the deck there. This next video is for ship impact analysis. Here again, we have meshed the impacted uh, leg. Uh, to account for the local deformation and the local indentation and the resulting uh, reduction in the moment carrying capacity, which could, under certain circumstances, lead to the failure of the whole structure. Again, you get very large deformations. Okay, so the, these are the limitations of the current collapse uh, program out there. Uh, in the current collapse, once a global limit point is encountered, the program is no longer uh, able to go any further. In other words, the program uh, the solution will diverge. Uh, for the this behavior shown on the right-hand side, this is atypical of snap buckling. Once the program reaches a, li a local limit point, it will then jump to the next stable configuration uh, and then continue loading again. The old collapse does not predict the unstable portion of the curve in either case. This is a comparison between uh, the current collapse uh, the, and the new collapse program. In other words, the deformations. As you can see, the new collapse program, the deformations uh, it, it can predict are very, very large in comparison to the old one. Okay, so again, for the same problem here, you can see that uh, this is a low def deflection curve uh, for the same problem. The old collapse failed to converge at a very early stage, whereas the new collapse uh, program or collapse two program continues to uh, provide a solution way after the peak load. Uh, the new collapse program will automatically switch to the arc length iterations once, once the structure has uh, reached the peak load. This is another pushover analysis. And again, you can see the new collapse has failed to converge uh, at a very early stage, whereas the, sorry, the old collapse has failed to converge at a very early stage, whereas the new collapse now continues to show the first uh, failure and then the peak load, and then it subsequently uh, starts to unload. 
Now, from all our tests so far, uh, the, the old collapse tends to give uh, what we call uh, conservative solutions. And again, if you zoom in onto this area here, you can see the ability of the new collapse program to predict very complicated uh, behavior. Again, this is the same, pro uh, the same uh, problem. However, this is the inelastic buckling. And here again, we have compared our results with uh, various other solutions. The, the new collapse comes with uh, many, uh, how do you call it, verification problems, which are included in the manual. And basically, uh, these problems are also included with the software uh, in the samples directory. Here again, uh, we have compared our results against other products or other theoretical uh, predictions. And again, we see that the new collapse uh, agrees very well with the other uh, programs. Here we have uh, another case of a 3D frame and in this case, we have predictions, uh, again, comparisons against the USFOS program as well. This is a toggle frame and a, a typical snap buckling problem. And again, here we can see that the new collapse uh, compares very well with the existing analytical solutions. Again, this is an elastoplastic uh, a dome frame and again this is a typical of snap buckling again however this is elastoplastic behavior and again we get very good comparison with the theoretical solutions and and there are there are many many of these solutions that are like I sort of said provided with the software and these are all included in the new manual the comparisons are made uh, against both analytical solutions and in, in addition to that we also have ca comparisons against design codes these are the failure curves uh, for design codes and again you see very good comparison between the new collapse and the existing results out there okay so I think we'll call it a day there if we, uh, we open it up for questions Okay, I think some questions. Uh, the first question is that how does Collapse 2 differ from DMV's program, USFOS? Uh, USFOS program, uh, like I sort of said, uh, basically limits your hinge formation at the ends of the member and the center of the member. And again, uh, this is not necessarily true, especially if you have a jacketed structure where the stiffness is different between the various elevations. So the assumption that you're going to get a hinge at the center uh, is invalid, basically. Uh, okay, as a reminder again, if you have a question, you can enter your question on the q and section. And the next question is that, can we use Collapse 2 during the original design phase? Right. Uh, in the past, uh, programs have been used during the original design phase. There is something called the ALARPLARP principle, which basically says that you can make minor changes at a minimal cost and you can basically design the structure and initially find out what the failure mechanism is if it's a particular member you can increase the thickness of that or the diameter of that and generally what that does it'll increase your strength maybe by 25 30 percent and then you continue the process again and then you the next the thickness or the size of the next member and then this case your strength may only go up by maybe by 10% and yes so you so you can uh, use the alarp principle uh, in conjunction with the collapse uh, 
program during the initial design phase. Uh, okay. Uh, next question is that uh, what are the difference between the original Collapse and Collapse 2? Well, the main difference is, as, as I talked about earlier, and that is the fact that the old Collapse does not account for both large displacements and large rotations. And secondly, uh, the old collapse does not have what we call an arc length approach to predict unloading. The old collapse does a direct uh, solution to the equilibrium equations rather than go through a tangent stiffness matrix and using wraps and iterations. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, are Collapse 2 supporting joint flexibility or uh, other features in the current Collapse? Right. The, all, all the features that are included in the current Collapse will be included in Collapse 2. So joint flexibility, joint failure, local buckling, all of these features uh, will be included. And also the last question is that, uh, what is more important, initial buckling after the peak load or the peak load itself? Uh, well then, that, that's a good question. Uh, the initial buckling could be buckling of a member or a joint, uh, which normally results in a dynamic, uh, how do you say, behavior from one stable configuration to another. And that could mean the top side moving suddenly over a given distance. And of course, this will introduce dynamic behavior, inertia loads into the structure. Don't forget, the collapse analysis is a static solution. So to rely on the peak load can be very, how do you say it, uh, unsafe in the sense that the initial uh, buckling oh, could generate an enough inertia load, dynamic load, that the structure will fail after that. Okay. Okay, uh, one more question. So, uh, uh, does elastoplastic calculation can handle kind of cyclic load in Collapse 2? Uh, right now, yeah. loading and loading. Yes, the cyclic load, the hysteresis effect, uh, can be captured with the, with the current collapse program and the new collapse program. 